John Cornyn, Republican of Texas and the Senate Majority Whip, spoke to reporters on Thursday on Capitol Hill. Tom Brenner The New York Times The Senate will convene at 10 a.m. Friday, to continue the debate on taxes, ahead of a possible final vote later in the day, Republicans seemed to be inching toward victory on Thursday and picked up the support of Senator John McCain of Arizona, but they faced a setback late in the day when they were left scrambling to find hundreds of billions of dollars in extra revenue to satisfy concerns about the bill's deficit effects. Lawmakers are now mulling options that would result in a tax increase down the road, including a possible increase in the corporate tax rate and the revival of the alternative minimum tax on wealthy individuals and some companies. Senate leaders still need 50 votes for passage. Republican leaders ended Thursday with the same problem they started with they still need to secure 50 votes to be able to pass their tax bill. Their effort appeared to be gaining momentum on Thursday, with talk of a final vote later that night or early Friday. But by the end of the day, they were contending with twin setbacks, both involving how the bill would affect federal budget deficits. The Congressional Joint Committee on Taxation said in an analysis released on Thursday afternoon that the legislation would add $1 trillion to federal budget deficits over a decade, even after accounting for economic growth. In addition, a provision meant to prevent ballooning deficits ran into parliamentary problems. The provision would have increased taxes if economic growth fell short of expectations, but it was deemed by the Senate parliamentarian to run afoul of budget rules that must be followed if the bill is to be shielded from a Democratic filibuster. Without the so-called trigger, the votes of a handful of Republicans, including Senator Bob Corker of Tennessee, appeared at risk. Senator Corker has been pretty clear he doesn't want any deficit spending. Senator John Cornyn, Republican of Texas, said on Thursday, adding that he did not agree with the Joint Committee on Taxation's assessment. To pass the tax bill in the Senate, Republican leaders can lose only two of their members, assuming Democrats are unified against the measure. Friday could be a long day. The Senate will convene on Friday morning and the debate on taxes will continue. At some point, the Senate will undertake a marathon of amendment votes known as a voterama. Eventually, there would be a final vote on the legislation. But in the meantime, Republicans need to decide how they want to change their bill. To satisfy Mr. Corker, for example, Republicans were discussing putting in place tax increases that would take effect some years from now, a step that would soften the deficit effects of the legislation. Will they decide to raise taxes? The options under discussion to satisfy the deficit hawks could essentially result in a tax increase down the road. Lawmakers have talked about raising the corporate tax rate above 20% after a period of years. There is also discussion about reviving the alternative minimum tax, or AMT, on high net individuals and some companies. Both of those ideas are unlikely to sit well with some Republicans, including those in the House, who could be criticized for essentially voting to increase taxes. Lawmakers may decide that's a risk worth taking or they could ultimately decide to jettison the deficit hawks concerns and lose their votes. Several senators are worthing. As Republicans mull changes to their tax plan, the spotlight will focus on several senators with varying concerns. Republican leaders do not need to win over all of these lawmakers. In fact, they could decide that some demands are simply not worth meeting, assuming they can satisfy other Republicans and therefore get the 50 votes they need. Vice President Mike Pence can also provide a tie-breaking vote. At least a handful of senators have expressed concerns about the deficit, including Mr. Corker and Senators Jeff Flake of Arizona and James Lankford of Oklahoma. Now that the trigger is dead, Republicans may need to come up with another idea to protect against piling up debt as a result of the tax overhaul. Two Republicans, Ron Johnson of Wisconsin and Steve Daines of Montana, have objected to how the bill treats pass-through businesses, whose profits are distributed to owners and taxed at individual rates. In light of their concerns, Republicans plan to sweeten the tax treatment of these businesses. Finally, there is Susan Collins of Maine, a moderate Republican who has her own concerns about the tax overhaul. She wants the bill to allow individuals to deduct up to $10,000 in property taxes, and adding that provision could help win her over.